continue their streak. I'm glad you mentioned that about Dark Zero playing some of the most rounds. I think they're tied with Space Station for the most rounds played or something along those lines this season so far. And both of these teams, both Space Station and Dark Zero, have one thing in common. They played the ever-living heck out of the qualifiers. Now, Dark Zero's run through the six Invitational qualifiers came to a disappointing close for that team, failing to even make it to the semi-semifinals. They didn't even really make it to the quarterfinals. Of course, you saw that it was Orglas, Rise Nation, and Space Station as your final three teams. But that's just the qualifiers. And hopefully Dark Zero is well-rested because they will be going up against one of the best teams in the world through the four play days thus far. The very first ban will be EG taking out a Montane here. Dark Zero responds with a Jackal. It was Necrox who's been playing an awful lot of Jackals so far for Evil Geniuses. And despite the fact that teams keep banning Montane against Dark Zero, it's the Blitz of Mint that ends up being most teams' undoings. If I'm not mistaken, Necrox has been one of the top performers for Evil Geniuses so far this season, so if the target ban is directed at him, that makes a whole lot of sense, especially on a map like Coastline, where there's so little, so few places to hide as a defender that if your Jackal's going to start detecting people, then... I mean, you don't you don't really often have a place you can move to, so that's a smart play as much as it is an odd ban from. Uh, uh, I mean, coming out into this match from uh, Dark Zero, so Maestro and Echo both gone. That's not uncommon. Usually, you see one of them at least. Both of them not too crazy. The Montane also be taken out, not too crazy. So across the board, making a whole lot of sense. Dark Zero is going to bring the Blitz in lieu of the Montane, also. A sensible thing, but actually, ooh, it's a fake out. I like this from Dark Zero. Keeping the shield in mind for evil geniuses, but not in play for Dark Zero. They're going to be the Dokubi instead. NVK carrying his team in yesterday's matchup. He's been promoted to the dock, so they'll be slapping the ACOG on him, and he'll be able to do some damage from that position. With Maestro being banned, we're going to see a bulletproof camera from NVK go on the bomb chassis in A, looking all the way towards the delivery slash service signs of things, or sorry, my apologies, bombsite B, sometimes I get those confused. Mm -hmm. But as for the rest of the team, they've got tools at their disposal to be able to take care of the shields. They've got the toxic canisters from the smoke, they've got the C4 in hand on behalf of Geo, who still has not changed his name, and then you've got the goo mines as well from Young. Camera this also happens right. to be a pretty good site to be able to lock down a shield play, because typically, you're gonna push through one of two areas the main doorway into the kitchen, or the service entrance, both of which are ripe to be laid out with tons of traps. Sen, Poppy, Geo. Is that a combination of Senpai and Poppy? I don't... I have since learned to not question the names that Geo uses. Geometrics was by far and away his best name, in my opinion. Well, I mean, yeah, I would agree with that one. But we know him as Geo. His name is Geo. He's going to have a camera out on that north balcony. It looks like it might have been shot out there, actually, by Pojo. Didn't quite catch it, but uh, he's still trying to play aggressive on the north balcony. We've seen a lot of uh, people do that. We were talking earlier in the previous match, actually, about that defense aggression being also necessary, especially on a map like Coastline, where you have so little to fall back on as defender. We're going to be seeing an awful lot of hot and cold be playing Buck on this map, which is a pretty common place for Dark Zero when it comes to coastline. Imagine that Matthew Stevens, aka Hot and Cold, will likely be going upstairs at some point to try and rain down on the defense. From the look of the silhouettes, we can tell that there will be second floor presence from EG. We've got Necrox's typical Jaeger being played in the hands of Canadian, or at least somewhat typically Necrox over the last little while. They had him on Jaeger for a little bit here. MBK inside of the main lobby with all those doors barricaded knows that he might be in a contest against that buck, but first set of logic bombs will try to keep everybody in place. Playing just next to that wooden wall, you're going to see that first phone call be silenced by MBK, and a second drone from Hot and Cold will come out as this cat, this game of cat and mouse will continue. All the while, you're going to see double presence and NVK, a beautiful shot through the main lobby door, trying to follow up on it, but no, it's Canadian oh. there, and he's downed. Nyx will finish him off, but the dock of NVK will be able to revive himself. So, a great play from Canadian to transfer his life and strength over to NVK. Keep that dog's in excellent position. Oh no, Mint, you got to land those shots. He finally will, but the smoke cutting off NVK means that EG will be, for the time being, cut in half. Still waiting to see what NVK can do inside of the main lobby. He's just going to fire blindly into that smoke, but not find any target. 
Nixon's sight, and he's got a great position here to cut off rotation. There's only one anchor right now, and that's Nacrox. Has the smoke, he will be shot in the hand, not the face, and Nix narrowly missing an opportunity. Geo's able to get mint, and that's one of the flank holds, so that's gonna allow those two roamers to rotate back a second there for Geo. Excellent gunplay from the Valkyrie, Nix. Very much the same. As he is on low HP, he could win this, but it's going to be close. Challenging Necrox, he'll lose the fight. Evil geniuses take round number one. But it was a close and well-fought round from both teams. Almost zero chance for Nyx to walk away from that altercation alive, largely due to Geo's call to push through lobby and then meet up in bathroom. That is a trade waiting to happen on EG's side of things. So what would have been essentially an impactless frag on Nyx's behalf doesn't even end up happening. He gets the down, but... That's not really going to give you much. We only had one anchor for a large portion of that round on Evil Genius's side, and Dark Zero clearly were not aware of that. They were putting a little bit too much emphasis on taking the main lobby. And the fact that they did not get NVK in the initial engagements or any of the following engagements were, I, in my opinion, it was the real crime there from Dark Zero that they weren't able to get that NVK dock. Following that, Geo coming back from his roam, he actually swept up in to security and then into the open area to get those last two kills on the flank watchers Defenders, before pushing his way in to assist Necrox. Really, gotta say, great job to Geo on the flank, great job to MBK in the main lobby, and great job to Necrox being that linchpin, the anchor in sight, not faltering for a second. And coming up to the last moments of that round, able to uh, finally get the uh, last kill onto Nyx. Uh, a lot of you might have been uh, Wondering, by the way, why did uh, Nyx not die, or why did Nyx not get that kill onto Necrox when he was uh, holding the rotation? Um, when you're holding that SMG 11, your hands come up really close to your face, and that's what Necrox happened to have in hand. And in case you did not know, bullets do not penetrate limbs typically in uh, Rainbow Six, so if you shoot someone in the hand and it's blocking the head, no headshot. Yeah, very frustrating, especially when you're going up against operators like Rook and Doc. This is a huge run out from Canadian, very brazen, over towards the pool where. He infamously spawned Pig Jonas and match point against his team at the Invitational Grand Finals map five last year. So yeah. it's gonna go for another roll of the die, obviously being powered by his favorite sponsored energy drink, which he likes to try and tout as much as he possibly can. Coming into this matchup, a big shout out to Siege GG for their stat work, of course. Nyx sitting with the second highest kills in the entire region. Obviously, Rampy leads the way, but Nyx not too far off. And with two kills so far through this first round, Nyx is only five away from 50. He's currently sitting at 45. And it's very likely that at least one player will hit that 50 bomb today. Nyx gonna lose his drone, though. That drone hole there between VIP and the hallway just outside of B is uh, actually hotly contested. And uh, it's going to be Nyx to try and challenge up. He'll lose the fight to Geo as he is not far enough away to gain the angle onto Geo's head. Those angles, that perspective, can be quite difficult to manage in Siege. And just a little bit of miscalculation there on Nyx's part. That puts Dark Zero, a man down, having used half the round so far to take control of the north and east side of this top floor on the coastline. Cotton working his way towards Luggage Hall. He's doing it quite slowly, but he's aware that Canadian is playing behind the bar inside of Aquarium. The fallback, though, will be called by Pojo, and that's going to make Houghton aware that he can push this. A long angle being played here by Canadian could potentially net a kill, but he's playing with fire at this point as three Dark Zero operators come in to push Aquarium. Hot and Cold's entrance will be cut off, but so will be Canadian as he gets pushed out of the double panel in the back of Billiards. That'll be an opening frag on behalf of Dark Zero after Nyx had gone off earlier. So with EG defending this site upstairs, you'll see that the rest of that team will have to coalesce around the site. Two bodies for EG downstairs. Imagining that they will be trying to use either of those stairwells, likely cool vibes as it's a much safer entrance back to the site. But NVK is going to go through the main lobby instead. You've got Mint there possibly doing flank watches of the Zofia playing inside a 90, a spot that was for a period called Jaeger spot, because there'd usually be a Jaeger playing in that position. The smokes from Young, or from Necrox rather, will be incredibly helpful. You've also got the C4 from Young, not too far off. They look to try to cut off DZ's entrance. So oh, hot and just storms the gates on top of the billiard table. That'll be a second kill. Mint is there to take out Young. NVK coming back to site will do so admirably, taking out Hot and Cold. 
For a second, it sounded like we would hear the telltale rip of the C4 from the Valkyrie, but it'll get shut down as Jarvis dodges around the corner and leaves NVK down in courtyard. Languishing, far off side. Diffuser goes down in favor of Dark Zero. And oh, the flank watch of Mint. Say goodbye, NVK, very low HP, trying to come back. He's gonna have to be looking at a lot of different avenues to get inside of the site. You still got Jarvis and Pojo Man up for Dark Zero. And NVK will begin his assault very slowly. Looking in towards Hookah. But he turns his back to Pojo Man and it's a very easy cleanup for the Capital. And an anticlimactic round for the fans of Evil Geniuses. That fan base is going to bleed blue on that one. Dark Zero equalizes. It's a shame we missed that shot from MVK. It must have been exceptionally clean. Uh, but it wouldn't have mattered. In the end, uh, not being able to clutch it out is not terribly surprising. If he had had full HP, maybe, a little bit more information on his side, then it was possible, but not the case. Now, overall, that attack round from Dark Zero, well conducted. I like their focus on Aquarium. And they did not get distracted Despite losing that man early on, they were able to have a great execution there when they actually went for it. A big part of that was hot and cold. In my mind, he was the hero of the round, able to, able to get the first entry onto Canadian, but also followed that up by taking out Necrox. Once Necrox was eliminated, there was so little presence on Billiards for Evil Geniuses. They still had the C4s in play, two of them, in fact. Geo and uh, also the Mute inside of uh, Hookah, but... Neither of them able to get those T4s off in any meaningful way. And because of that, Dark Zero, with an uninfluenced Billiards site, was able to get that Diffuse plant down. So props to DZ for that push and that play. Evil Geniuses had a good setup to counter it, but it just didn't work out. As the uh, unbridled aggression from Dark Zero came out, there was no response from EG. I like the way that Dark Zero controlled Aqua as well, especially with Houghton in that position. Canadian was in such a bad spot by that double wall that there was yeah. no way for him to rotate out. He tried to when Necrox threw down the smoke grenade. And one of the things that a lot of people overlook is that we've seen many smokes burn one of the toxic canisters solely to allow their teammate to try and rotate behind it. Now, that yellow smoke cloud is not fully opaque. You can see through it. It's got a bit of transparency to it, and that's exactly what happened. Hot and cold, and from our perspective, too, looked like Canadian was visible, clear as day. But sometimes you're able to try and get around that, that smoke without really, really worrying about getting pinched off. If there was more of an opaqueness to it, there, I think would open up more opportunities for counterplay around that and being able to use those toxic canisters in a way to help your team. Dark Zero going to be drawing their way in again from the north side uh, and the east side of the building. And doing this, they are getting themselves a pretty easy enter er, entrance into Bomb the building because Dark Zero aren't going to have to contest any of the evil genius roamers over here. As uh, EG has just been playing the vertical roam exclusively. No horizontal roamers to speak of. Uh, so that's a good, it's either a good read or a bad, uh, poor call from EG, either, or a good read from Dark Zero or a poor call from EG. Either way, it's working out really good for Dark Zero as um, they now have full control of Aquarium without having to really work too much for it. It took half the round, sure, but at the same time, it's good control. Standing. Now, here's a nice call from Evil Geniuses. Also, Canadian with the pulse underneath, potentially going to get a kill right now, and yes, there it is. Nyx goes down. Well placed C4 there from Canadian. No heads up from Dark Zero to, to understand that. And once again, DZ will have to pull this one off without their main weapon, which is the Ash on Nyx, who incidentally, and interestingly, has actually played Ash more than anybody else in this entire region, more than Rampy. Mm. Canadian from below. Doesn't have a second C4, but he does at least have a cardiac sensor to be able to call to the rest of his team, and one of the most communicative members of any single North American team will be able to vocalize that. He's got three tasty morsels on his plate. All of them currently arranged over on Aqua's side, waiting to push on him. Tricky thing here is that Dark Zero are now committed to the strategy, and their strategy is fully given away. Mint's going to get the first entry, though, and NVK going down is going to be fantastic. A little bit of a miss there from Young, but it's okay. It's just a goo mine. Three people playing the same angle here from Dark Zero is not good. Surely you have to have one flank watch. Somebody over in the luggage side of things. Young, through the smoke, takes out Jarvis. The buck is down, and Mint will also be alive, but then dead. He'll join the rest of his teammates in the grave as Dark Zero gets buried under an avalanche of evil geniuses. They just storm all the way out of Hookah in towards Billiards, and you say goodbye to every single member of DZ. Yeah, 
that was a solid hold there from Evil Geniuses, not allowing Dark Zero to make that rush happen a second time around. So, good job to EG. Dark Zero got the early control in the north and the east, as they did in the previous attempt attacking Billiards, and they got the early control onto Aquarium. It was even easier this time because Canadian wasn't challenging it, but they also didn't get any of those early picks that Houghton was able to get the first time that DZ attacked Billiards. Because those early picks didn't come out, it was a slaughter when Dark Zero tried to force their way into sight. They didn't have the right tools for that job, and here you go. Don't have them, bring them. They've decided to pull out the Defenders Blitz on Mint. And uh, as we all know, I'm sure, Mint is an exceptional Blitz player. We've seen him do some amazing things with Blitz in the past. Got an ace, for example. So we'll see if he's able to uh, pull the same feet out of his hat this time around. Uh, Evil Genius is going to be one of the hardest opponents to do that against. Going to the double bar site. We've uh, gone to everywhere except for Penthouse so far. And it's only been four rounds. Ten seconds to insertion. These double bars downstairs tend to be Five one of the best left. ways for the defense to extend on a lead. It has, does hold the distinction of the one site that has the highest defense. defensive Attackers win rate. Locate and defuse a bomb. Really hinges upon the operator bands. Mira does make this site a lot easier to defend, but there has been an astonishing lack of Mira so far, even though the fact that she is not banned. Yeah, I mean, it is quite interesting to see um, Mira Attackers not being played here, but... I mean, it's not that crazy of an idea. We, we've talked about this before. There's a lot of teams that just don't do Mira anymore, and it's, yeah, it makes sense. She gets banned quite a lot. It's hard to make strats around her, and sometimes if you have the Mira window open, it completely destroys your whole strategy. So it, it forces all of your focus as a defender into one point, um, and that's the Mira window. And sometimes it can be more of a distraction than anything, to be honest. All right. That's the judgment call each team has to make. This is the same position that Hot and Cold has played in prior, which is downstairs in security. That's a bit of a waste of a drone from Pojo there. I don't think he was expecting to lose it. Mint is going to throw his own in now, but Geo scoots off. It's an interesting roam right now from uh, Evil Geniuses. They've got a good control on the top floor. I would imagine both the hatches are blown, right? Well, You've got the hatch over... Yeah, it, no, it the hatch can't. is actually soft behind Geo. He does have... If he has an impact, he's going to be able to open it up. This is very similar to what we've seen from Lestream, actually. Lestream does a setup very, very similar to this. But no, Geo actually ran a bulletproof camera, so very unlikely that he'll be able to drop through the hatch at some point. Which would be a big advantage for Dark Zero. Throw Mint on the Blitz and just have him basically storm right in, but a great crossfire is established. As Young is there, Necro Necrox takes down Mint. Nyx, unfortunately, disconnects. But we have a great defuse plant going down on behalf of Dark Zero. They're second through four rounds. Hot and cold waiting and watching to see if somebody's going to drop. As there's a post plant on behalf of DZ. Pojo sitting inside. He'll get a Canadian as he tries to rotate back to site, but there's still four more bodies to go, and EG's going to be able to double up quite well. Hot and cold is nowhere near this diffuser. Just waiting to see if there's going to be a disable happening. Oh, Hot and picks up one. He's going to be able to find the second. He's spotted on the cam. Comes right in, but no, Young is there. Cuts him down. All the while, the diffuser being worked on by the Jaeger of NVK, and Evil Geniuses will walk away with a pretty great round. Unfortunate for Dark Zero to have Nyx drop at the last second. Who knows how that could have turned out without it, but at least he's back in the matchup this time. So, it looks like we will be having a rehost as uh, Dark Zero are calling it right now. We don't know exactly what's going on on their side right now, but uh, it's fair. We'll go for that rehost. Now, Evil Geniuses uh, had a really good defense there, and it was very similar to how they were defending the uh, floor just above, um, holding on to the south push. Equally, Dark Zero coming from the south, this time from the south southern lobby instead of Aquarium. So definitely, uh, I think, static strategies coming out from Dark Zero uh, right this minute, and Evil Geniuses predicting them fairly easily. Yeah. A big part of that is also that while Dark Zero managed to get the, the fuser down, they lost two players, two evil geniuses, and then one player to the server. That was Nyx. And this is another thing, just as an aside. Um, Nyx has, 
I don't think really influenced anything at all so far in this match. He's yeah. been dying early on pretty much every single round. This time it was to the server, so you can't exactly blame him for that. But there's something going on there, and it's something that Dark Zero needs to correct, as he is specifically a tool designed for killing playing on Ash. I want to say that Nyx and Coastline are such a volatile matchup. It's like water and oil, right? I, I think Nyx's debut either came on Border or Coastline. One of his first matches on Coastline, I think he was playing Echo, and he was peaking everything, and he was dying and getting cut down repeatedly. Didn't end up working out so well for him. And it's the same thing now. Nyx just plays this very aggressive, loose style on Coastline. He ends up getting pounced on. I don't know if it's simply a lack of droning on Dark Zero's type of things. I don't know if it's just a lack of, of comfort with the actual map on Nyx's side of things, but there's obviously something in the water. Yeah, I, when it comes to Nyx and Coastline, I can't say it's droning. I mean, he, we. I think he's been droning himself in, which is weird. Yeah. Because Dark Zero is really. I mean, they've always been good at droning each other in. So it's it's odd to see. But I, I remember one thing in particular was when he was entering in through VIP. And he droned himself into the Valkyrie. Then he challenged the Valkyrie and lost the fight. But he was droning himself that whole time. So right. I think there's definitely some. Uh, some adjustment that needs to be made on the Dark Zero side of things when it comes to entry. That's been a problem for them so far. And the only time we they actually won a round was uh, due to Evil Geniuses honestly playing way too aggressively. Yeah. Canadian specifically by Billiards. Then Hotton getting a bit of a lucky kill on Necrox who was exposed uh, when Hotton decided to rush into Billiards. So that's the one round that DZ took. And other than that, it's been pretty much Evil Genius dominant so far in this match, which is something that uh, is going to be, I think... Um, Really frustrating. It'll build up for DZ over time, especially considering, uh, I mean, we expected this to be so much closer than it is so has or than it has been so far. Yeah, I absolutely agree on that. I was going to say, especially on coastline. Yeah. Take a look at the fact that this is the defense winning three of four rounds, twice of which they have had to battle against the diffuser. Now, yeah. The diffuser was successful on the only round that we saw Dark Zero win, which was upstairs in hookah and billiards. They try for something similar on the double bars, but then they kind of flub the post plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think that there's a big question mark on that round due to the unfortunate disconnect from Dick from Nix. Not Nix. It's okay, it happens. It happens. It happens, Parker. That's gonna be a clip for sure. Yeah. Oh well. It was you nice working with you, Parker. You deal with it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it happens. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Nyx. Poor, poor Nyx, really. Really, not even me in that case. That's a poor Nyx kind of moment. I'm so sorry, Nyx. I don't know what I've done to you. He didn't mean it. He I didn't, didn't, I didn't it. mean it. I did not mean it. Nyx. Nyx has been playing amazing this season. We could talk about Amazing well this season. Been. Terrible this game. Not, the, not, not this Also, season. there was a second Nyx at one point, if you recall, for yeah. Accelerate Gaming. Doesn't play there anymore. That could have been a double oops. <laughs> I, every time you say his name now, I just I can't help. Stop but laugh. thinking about it. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> My mind. Okay, Parker. Nick, <laughs> we. I, I said this at the very start. We have a couple players that are within striking distance of hitting 50 kills. Yes. All right. Nix is seven off. He picked up two kills, I believe, was his scoreline before we ended up going to the to rehost. So Nick's he'd be it. sitting at 45 right now. I think he picked up two in the very first round. Okay. So round number one, Nix picked up two kills. Round two, he's the opening death. Round three, he's the opening death. Round four, he DCs. Yeah. So yeah, so there you go. So we head into round number five, presumably with him still sitting at two kills. He's five off. I know what you're thinking. Stop it. Anyway, the way that he's been playing has been unfortunately putting his team at almost a perpetual 4v5 through four rounds. That's obviously yeah. a big issue. And keep in mind that the kills that came in round number one, which, were, which was the round that he didn't die right off the bat, came when he was basically the last person alive in the middle of the kitchen. Yeah, it didn't mean anything. So I don't know if it's droning or not. I don't know if it's utility. I'm not entirely certain what it is. But something needs to be found with the way that Nyx plays this. The rest of the team is good. Mint and Jarvis are also very close to tying Nyx along with the most kills in that team. Yeah, and it, I think I think the big thing for for me with Nyx is that it, it looks as though he is playing a role specifically designed to be a, apart from the rest of the team. Um, often when we see him playing, he is somewhere else entirely. Uh, and is unable to actually influence anything because he's doing his own thing. And he hits a wall, and that wall is Evil Geniuses. We're going to get back into the match here as we have everything set up and ready for you guys. And we'll be going back to Kitchen, the first site that we saw Evil Geniuses defend. They were successful the last time they went here. So, overall, 
the fake out of the Mira. Again, the Mira not being played here by evil geniuses. They don't want to commit fully to it, and uh, I honestly agree with their thought process here. The Valkyrie is going to be a more influential operator in my opinion, and uh, Geo has been playing really well on Valkyrie so far. Another thing I like is that they decided to six pick into the Valkyrie. That means that Dark Zero is unlikely to six pick into an IQ to counter that Valkyrie. IQ not being played here from Dark Zero is also still, despite that fact, surprising. Their lineup has been fairly static, all things considered. Um, I think there's definitely an argument to be made at this point, considering how good or how well Geo has been playing Valkyrie. Even if you don't see the Valkyrie, or even if you don't see the Valkyrie in the reveal phase, to still bring an IQ instead of maybe an Ash or a Twitch. I mean. I it would be really nice because we've seen a lot of Evil Genius Valkyrie cams actually in positions that have not been noticed by Dark Zero. There was one, in, for example, in the last round, there was one in the uh, southern lobby. So all the while Dark Zero is attacking onto double bar, their positions are exposed and they're being called out to all of Evil Geniuses. That's why Dark Zero lost so many of those fights. So IQ could be good here. Coastline's a very strange map in the sense that the attacking lineup stays the same for all six rounds. There's almost l very limited flexibility on the attack. A team will run with the same five composition. You'll usually be absent a hard breacher. You'll usually be absent a glass because he'll likely be banned most of the time. Strangely, not actually banned here on this match, which is very fun. I mean, if we're going to make the argument about map, then that even reinforces the IQ pick because uh, Coastline is also one of those maps where if Valkyrie is not banned, she's almost always in play, which means you, you should probably have an IQ. So, I don't know. That's definitely an interesting setup right now. Well, we'll see how it plays out, though. Still potential for uh, a comeback here from Dark Zero. They haven't lost the half yet. They could still draw it. Have located a bomb. All right. So I want to see what we can accomplish or what can be accomplished from Hot and Cold because I haven't really been all that impressed with his utility play. He's been fragging out quite well, but yeah. I'm so used to him just sitting up there tearing up the floor and all of that, and it's not really been the case. Pojo gets the opening frag, and Nyx is there. There you go. Get on the board, Nyx. Get your kill. Takes out NVK and sits down the dock. Excellent shot there from Nix, and he's getting ever close for that 50 kills total in the season, so well done to him. Canadian, though, on a deep roam upstairs, and he still has that vertical control, which means Dark Zero is not going to be able to utilize much of their utility. An unreinforced wall is going to make Young's life oh so very difficult, and he will be forced to rotate, which will really block out the control here for Evil Geniuses. They're in a tricky spot now. Canadian trying to bring his team back into things by getting some aggressive kills, but he's not able to find any. Trying to hold off now with utility still in hand of Evil Geniuses. Necrox rotates all the way out actually to Courtyard. Looking to see if he can find somebody there, but there's nobody all the way down in blue bars for him to connect with. He only has one toxic canister left. All the while, Mint inside doing great work to get that plant down. Young almost getting cut off inside a bathroom as he tries to wrestle with Dark Zero. It appears that the plant has been abandoned for the time being. A smart call from DZ. Opening up that briefcase for a second time to get the diffuser down will be Mint. As Hot and Cold loses most of his HP, Young attempting to return to sight. There you go, Nyx. A second kill. Get on the board. Hot and Cold takes one down as Canadian trades off Jarvis. And, well, all poor Necrox. Looking through a rotate hole into blue all the way over towards Sunrise. We'll need to rotate in back towards the site. A frag grenade goes sailing over top, but his position not given away. So quiet he'll feast upon hot and cold as there's not much life left in the buck to begin with. A drone of mint will give away Necrox's position and well, Necrox just wanders right on in. There's Nyx with a three piece. Excellent work. He's gonna come back. He's gonna come back with a fury. Dark Zero will grab their second round and a man whose name has somewhat eluded me at least in the last five minutes. Excellent job from Nyx. So, so how close is he to 50 kills in the season, Parker? Where where are we at right now? Uh, he'd be at five kills. He'd be at 48. If my if my numbers are correct. So, if Parker's numbers are correct, and I think they are, sounds about right. Then uh, just two more kills, and he'll take that 50. And he, I believe, he would be the first in North America to accomplish that. Nobody's at 50 in North America. Rampy is very close. He's four away. Okay. So not that kills matter. Kills are not the only thing. But most of the people here that are topping the charts. Those are your entry fraggers. Right. These are the people that you're expecting to get kills. And because Nyx has uh, the highest play rate uh, in Ash, or as Ash in uh, NA, so I think that's really something that he should be getting. And uh, he managed in that round, and it was a big part of why Dark Zero was able to take the round. Massive props to you, Nyx, accomplishing that. Now, 
going back to Billiards. We've been here three times now. Seems to be one of the more beloved sites here from Evil Geniuses. They won it the last time we were here, lost it the time prior, but that was to, uh, due to some unlucky mistakes being made by EG and some great plays by Dark Zero. It's definitely a full lockout on the second attempt for Evil Geniuses, and it will be the last defense for EG on this map, as we are about to transition into the Ten second half. In again, the Valkyrie in play. Again, some great Five. Valkyrie cams. Potentially, again, some in excellent info on EG's side. And no IQ. Alright, another spawn peak here from Canadian. He might actually get one. Oh, he's a second too early. We saw the double silhouettes from Dark Zero. Oh. That would have been Nyx as well. But it could possibly have been silenced from the ACOG of the Rook. Canadian as he will head back in. Canadian's actually played quite a number of operators so far. Vigil, Pulse, Jaeger, and now the Rook. He's got a diverse lineup, that's for sure. Good flexibility that can be afforded on that team. Yeah. Mint back onto that shield, and uh, he wasn't able to do anything the last time he brought the shield as he walked into a crossfire and unfortunately got gunned down pretty easily. He's definitely a great blitz player, when he's been, not really been given many opportunities yet this match. Hot and cold downstairs potentially could use that skeleton key to really disrupt this defense, but uh, he needs somebody to hold for him, and you can see all those drones working on the DZ side to uh, gather information and uh, say, hey, yeah, Hotten, you can start working, and he's going to start with a nade. Bad timing there. Unfortunately, not going to get anything with that grenade. I think that was Necrox, too, who actually just escaped the blast of that frag grenade, so it would have been a very good opening pick, and not necessarily a perfectly thought-out target but still would have paid dividends for Dark Zero. As this is what I was expecting out of Hot and Cold. Patrol underneath, take away the ability for the defenders to sit, and just wait for your push. It's NBK on Cool Vibe stairs, though. Possibly in a tango with Nyx, not too far off. Nyx droning himself in, as you'd mentioned earlier. Seems to be the uh, deliberate choice for the Ash, if we could say that as well. Yeah. Also, whether they knew there was a shield or not, it's very apparent, as you can hear the telltale clanging of the shield as Mint tries to advance onto the stairs, Canadian eliminating hot and cold, using those sight lines that were opened up by the buck, as they do end up being a two-way street. So Dark Zero now in a tricky spot. They don't have a whole lot of control, and the holes that were opened from below really not working in their favor. They also have yet to take control of the cool vibe stairs, which is going to put evil geniuses in an excellent hold position. Nyx using his ass charge to clear out the barbed wire, not aware that there's somebody playing in that northwest corner. He will find an angle, though, onto the Rook of Canadian and take him down. Young trying to refrag will give away his position, and now it being known, Dark Zero will put pressure onto the young player deep inside of Hookah. NVK does get a frag, though, so it's looking even worse as Pojo goes down. That's the utility that won't be used. The smokes are not in great position right this minute, but here come Mint smokes to try and cover. He's got a good potential rush here. Nick's trying to come up cool vibes, and he will, oh, just narrowly lose the fight. He does down Young, but it's not enough as NVK gets the refrag, and Necrox will clean up Mint as he attempts to rush in. He will be exposed, not crouching. Jarvis, the last one alive for Dark Zero, and he's going to get one going for a second, but there's no time. Evil Geniuses lock out that round. Great job on the refrags from EG. Excellent positioning from Evil Geniuses as they fell off of Hookah. They retreated into Billiards. They kept one body on Cool Vibe stairs and just expected everything go according to plan. And a big part of why that plan could continue on was because you took out Hot and Cold early. You took out the buck. All of the sight lines that had been opened up underneath the feet of the defenders, well, that's it. You know where they are. You can play around it. You don't have to worry about a surprise grenade getting tossed through. You don't have to worry about more of the land upon which you sit being taken from you. You know that at that point, you're sitting pretty, so to speak. And EG could play around that. They fell back into billiards. They had a lot of sight lines, both the double doors inside of pink, the rotate hole into hookah. You had one body, two bodies technically playing over by cool vibes. You had the, the lesion that was playing in the back of hookah. And then you had the Jaeger playing at the top as well. Ultimately, almost picture-perfect coverage, even after they lost the Rook of Canadian. And EG responding to the aggression from DZ's push into Hookah. So now that we switch sides, Michael, it's going to be a kitchen defense to start things off here for Dark Zero, with the game being quite in hand for EG, at least for the time being. It seemed like momentum partially started to shift after Nyx got back into the lobby after the rehost. But 
alas, for DZ fans. You got one round in a row. Yeah, Evil Geniuses look very strong there on the first half, and going into the second, they've brought a very versatile lineup. So light on soft destruction. They have brought the Ash, so you do have that. But you've got, apart from that, the anti-electronics in the Twitch. You've got the disruption in the Capital. You've got more anti-electronic in the IQ. This is what we wanted to see, or at least what I wanted to see from Dark Zero when they were on their attacking half. Able to get those Valkyrie cams is going to be huge for Evil Geniuses. Uh, and you've got Young on the Habana. So a little bit of hard destruction. It's not essential that you bring hard destruction on Coastline, but having it can really help. It's going to put EG, I think, at a good situation in terms of their utility. Already an Xcaro is using, being used there. I'm not sure where exactly, but uh, it will detonate, looks like, by Kitchen. This is the first time that we've seen some hard destruction on behalf of... Maybe Castle Barricade. <laughs> ...any team, really, on Coastline. Yeah. Really rare to see a Thermite or a Hibana get brought, and typically you're going to see a Hibana, if anything. Yeah, on Co this map. Yeah, absolutely. A Thermite really doesn't see a lot of application. Really, the only time you'll see him is maybe on a penthouse attack, if you know that that's where they're going. Maybe on a kitchen attack to take out the bathroom wall. But that's really the only two times that you'll see an exothermic charge get any use here. And on top of that, I mean, nobody goes penthouse anymore. We haven't yeah. seen it yet so far. It's the only site that's left unplayed. So, yeah, considering how rarely it is played, it's not surprising Thermite has doesn't get picked up here very often. Previous EU play day, when we saw Coastline in Chaos versus Penta, there was no penthouse play there either. If you go back to SSG versus DZ, uh, or my apologies, still looking back farther under the last Coastline here. Some action going down as Jarvis looking his way through a very tight angle onto Guitar. Will land some shots, but Canadian able to take out his teammate of Hotton. So there goes the Valkyrie. Jarvis really does need to get a refrag before he falls off this. While Dark Zero has managed to delay quite a lot, it really will be all for naught. Jarvis being able to get back over towards this reinforcement that has been opened up by those Xkeros inside of VIP. You've got Geo there with Young not too far off, but it does appear that Jarvis will be able to retreat enough and not get caught. Thankfully, as a doc, he's able to heal himself back to life. A reset for Canadian as well from Young. So you'll get two members of either team fighting fit so to speak. We are in the last half of this round number seven with EG holding a 4-2 lead in the very first defense for Dark Zero in which the defense have actually looked pretty good overall. With one member down on Dark Zero, they will trail in body count and EG begins their assault over on towards the kitchen. And it does appear to be a service entry push, which is exactly what you'd anticipate. EG's plant being enabled by Canadian above as the ash just looks down through the floor that has been opened up inside a master bedroom. Another smoke from Necrox will go out, and then a second smoke will go out. And this time a canister on the young, who looks, appears to be as good as dead. Pojo, Jarvis, and Nyx getting one, and there you go. 50 kills on the board for Nyx, picks up two. And Pojo there with two of his own. As Dark Zero answers back. They will close that gap just ever so slightly. And congratulations. First to 50 frags in North America. It's going to be your boy, Nix. He's been having a good season so far. He's been a good addition to this roster since he came on previous season. So it's awesome to see him have that feat. Major props. Now, that last round, while Dark Zero did lose one player upstairs, they narrowly allowed for the dock to rotate back, and uh, I think most important, there were two minutes wasted on that top floor clear from Evil Geniuses. So it was a lot of time wasted, and there was plenty of utility for Dark Zero when the actual site push came out. Those gas canisters, those goo mines were able to not only slow down and disrupt Evil Genius's attack, but also even kill Defenders. Young flat Second out. Bomb. As he enters into the building, he died to a combination of goos and gas canisters. So that is really painful to watch happen, and uh, it comes down to great utility management from Dark Zero and good, uh, poor time management for Evil Geniuses. That's Defenders why that happened. Now, Double Bar is the next site here for Dark Zero, and... Uh, they're getting pretty close. It feels as though they have the capacity to bring this gap all the way back. Um, all things considered, I mean, in the last round, they looked exceptionally strong. Managing to lock out, uh, I think, in pretty dominant fashion for Dark Zero. 
Yeah, overall, attacking service is very difficult, especially when you have to try to maintain that presence above. And Ash is obviously a very formidable operator to have up there, but we've seen Zofias go up there with the breaching charges to be able to open up three different parts of the floor. We've seen Bucks be able to go up there as well. Obviously, a Buck is foregone by, uh, or is being foregoed, rather, or they will forego it. Mm -hmm. Words are hard sometimes. Words you know? are hard. Words are hard. The turtleneck might be cutting off blood flow to my brain. You know what also might be missing, or who also might be missing his brain? Canadian. Canadian. As Nick's, or, mm -hmm. or actually it was Jarvis, I believe, who yep. uh, got that headshot. Former teammates, and I believe there's been some action on that doorway with Jarvis in the past, Michael, if it uh, if it comes to memory here. So Canadian giving some credit in the tip of the hat to Jarvis, former teammates. Mm -hmm. Young's going to be pushing his way into the south lobby, and that's going to be the attack strategy for Evil Geniuses as they set up on the A site. An unreinforced wall is going to make these Xgaros kind of actually bad as they will be shot through the wall. And uh, it's not all of them taken out, but it's enough of them to deny a crowd troll, and that's, that's definitely really important. All it takes is one or two to completely throw it off, especially if they're in different places. Then you end up with this weird Tetris-esque disjointed look, but actually... It appears that there is a suitable amount to be able to get through, possibly not enough to crouch through it. We'll see. I that's, mean, a, that's a big no there from our spectator. It so. could it could definitely be some a little bit of soft destruction from either the lifeline from Geo yeah. or the, even just the guns from the rest of EG yeah. could make that big enough to uh, rotate through. Yeah, and it, it also depends on whether the IQ is bringing breaching charges or not as well. That's yeah. something that is definitely up there indeed, but NVK will have to put himself in a line of fire. And then, of course, you'll see him. So that's obviously a plan that will be unlikely to materialize. Mint playing from above in a similar position that we saw from Pojo in the six invitational qualifiers, but having a shield at his back is an opportunity to drop through that hatch whenever it comes. This might actually be an early execute here with a minute to go as we see the first round of logic bombs go off in the latter half of round number eight. And amidst the smoke, Pojo's gonna wander right in. No! He misses! It's two for EG! No! Necrox, a team kill, gets gunned down from hot and cold! And an advantage from EG still there, but they'll find themselves now trailing after an unfortunate team kill and a kill from hot and cold on Dark Zero. NVK and Geo will still be there on the board with Nyx likely to creep up ever so slightly. He sees the IQ and will light up NVK, finish him off, and Geo now the one-man army, but no, he's not going to be able to do it as Dark Zero cleans up, and they will tie it. Excellent fashion and a good read, despite an early scare losing both Nyx as well. As are not Nyx losing Pojo early on. Yeah, that that uh, that death on Pojo's side was really hard to watch when he went for the vault. So, in case you did not know, if you haven't played Rainbow Six, when you vault, you're um, the, you cannot pivot fully. You're restricted in your mouse movement. So Pojo saw the planter mid-vault because he was vaulting out of smoke. As you know, smoke will obstruct your screen pretty heavily if you're standing in it. Um, so he was vaulting to get out of the smoke. In the middle of the vault, he saw the planter, but he couldn't adjust his crosshair enough because of the vault. But if he hadn't vaulted, he wouldn't have seen the planter because of the smoke. So that was an overall <laughs> a mess of a situation there for Pojo. And uh, it looked bad. It was hard to watch, but it wasn't entirely his fault. And definitely something to note. The more important thing, of course, is that Dark Zero was able to fully recover that round. Uh, as, uh, yeah, we saw a little bit of a hiccup there. Uh, I believe it was Necrox who got that TK. Uh, I want to say on the Dokubi. You'd be correct. And uh, the rest of uh, Evil Geniuses really not having a whole lot of teeth in the round. They've got the plant down. They played their utility game really well. But when Dark Zero started challenging, it just seemed like they were the ones always coming out on top. The initial flurry, that was really good from EG. Just the post plant that really didn't work out. Now, going up to Billiards here for Dark Zero. They have been 100% successful so far on coastline defense as much as they struggle on the attack. So this is a little bit of, I think this is shades of the first half now being repeated here, but for the opposite team. And that's gonna make for a very close match. Yeah. Look at Dark Zero's lineup here. The way that they tend to play Ella is not that strange when you put it in the broader context of how everybody plays her. But typically what you'll have is they will revolve around strong Ella play in a very specific area, and it will be a key choke point that they know that their opponents need to take. 
I would imagine we're going to see something similar here from Nyx because Ella's not the... She's not the killing machine that she used to be. She's not the no. Polish super soldier that, you know, used to be able to run all over the map with impact grenades, a great gun, a laser beam, of, you know. She's not no an recoil. essential operator anymore. She's not, absolutely. It's also a bit of Xkeros being shut out yet again. They've got Canadian on Hibana. How many operators have, has Troy played so far today? I think it was young earlier on it Hibana. Was young. And, and in this rotation for Canadian, I mean, he is... You know, in the, it's funny because in the past you would say Canadian's one of the less versatile players on uh, Evil Geniuses. He tended to play a lot of the more static roles, but now it seems that there's been a little bit of a mental shift there for EG because Canadian has been playing everything. Yeah. And it, it, I'm guessing it's something along the lines of, I don't want to play this anymore, and Canadian's Troy's just like, yeah, all right, I'll pick it up. Give it to me. Well, it's two operators on attack so far from four that I can recall on defense, and Buck has also become a signature operator for him as of late, especially after BC moving to a coaching role with Dark Zero yeah. has been taken off. And this is, of course, a great map for Buck all across the board. But 90 seconds in here, very first kill is going to come to Hot and Cold. Say goodbye to the Twitch, a great weapon that will be silenced. Young is there to at least trade one off. So both members of EG and DZ will lose one apiece. And with Pojo, you're going to lose the only C4 on the board as well. The Doka B is really distracting Dark Zero and giving away their positions, but uh, at the same time, there's no capitalization by evil geniuses, so it's not really going to matter in the end. Mid playing aggressively inside of Hookah. We've seen this position played quite a lot for both teams, and he's still holding on for dear life. It's going to have to be a very quick push in, and oh, Mint with some great bullet pen on NVK through that hookah door. It's the second logic bomb will now ring away. They're too far off from one another, it's going to be EG and DZ running and colliding head first by the A bomb. And Young will be the focal point. He's at the double doors inside of Aquarium, looking to push on into Billiard. Houghton will be the bait, though, as that Rook is just going to let his bone continue to buzz away, giving his position to the rest of EG. Sustaining quite a bit of damage as your first set of smokes go down from Necrox, he'll peek wide and take out Nyx. And EG will continue to peek around the bomb chassis, answered by Houghton, traded off by Young, leaving us into a 2v2. And Jarvis, as well as Mint, very far off the beat. They'll push right on in, and it's a double piece, both for Mint and Jarvis to take out Canadian and Young. And for the very first time today, Dark Zero will take over the lead, five to four. Very well done round there from Dark Zero. Good job to adjust to everything that Evil Geniuses was doing. You'll notice that EG started with trying to take out the north and east side of the building, as Dark Zero had been doing on their attacking rounds. But then, once they decided that Dark Zero was too entrenched in those locations, Evil Geniuses decided we'll just fully rotate to Aquarium. Not a huge deal. We can come in from the south. We can just isolate our flank, buy luggage, and go for a site push. And Evil Geniuses started that site push, but were too slow. Many of you may have noticed that Dark Zero did not have anyone in Billiards when EG was in Aquarium. That was for that forced uh, Dark Zero to start rotating players back, and they did get players back in time. But it was an opportunity missed from EG, and that's the main takeaway from that situation. Once Dark Zero had everybody rotated back to hold the site and the push from Aquarium, it was an easy lockout as they just refrag, refrag, refrag. And since Dark Zero started the engagement with a man advantage, they ended it in a win. Yeah. All right. So, three consecutive rounds on defense for Dark Zero. This matchup between these two teams. It's been a very interesting one, all the way back when they were known as Continuum yeah, versus left. Flipside to start off Season 6, and then onwards, Five back and left. forth again. The meetings between these two teams last season, of course, DZ playing under a different moniker and a different banner, ended in a 6-1 and a 6-2. The 6-1 in favor of Evil Geniuses, the 6-2 in favor of DZ when they were known as SK Gaming. And, of course, a little bit of a rivalry between these teams, not just in terms of the fact that they're two of the oldest, consistent rosters, but also former coach of Evil Geniuses, Bacon, is now the main coach for Dark Zero, and former competitor for Evil Geniuses, Brandon Carr, BC, now also on Dark Zero. Jarvis used to play on this roster. He's now on DZ, too. Actually, technically, if we're talking about consistent rosters, Dark Zero is, I think, the oldest team in North America. Like, if we're, if we're, if we're balancing consistency with, with longevity, then it's Dark Zero. Yeah. And they are already shaping up here to have a very fast push in. Young, amidst the smoke, will be drawn out and pushed out by a great toss from Pojo Man. That's Necrox unable to do the trick and be able to give Young covering fire. 
Does appear that that second smoke canister will miss though, and Young is going to be able to get this plant down in 60 seconds. Oh, another team kill from Necrox. As hot and cold is there, but it's EG in perfect place to get the remainder of DZ as they push on out. Looked like Mint was trying to possibly stick the Diffuser there, but you hear the sides of the MP7, and he's just doing it! Mint is being able to get the Diffuser down, and he's taken out by Canadian, a great play, swiftly traded off by Pojo with NVK there, and Pojo so far back. We'll need to try and find Canadian and NVK. Canadian on yet another roster, but it's NVK finding Pojo, and we'll tie it back up at five apiece. That took 60 seconds, and a missed smoke from Pojo is what doesn't stop the plant going down from Young in the doorway of delivery, 5-5, five to five, and the first dropped round on defense from Dark Zero. So, Canadian was the real hero in that round. While the plant did get down, and that was impressive in of itself from Evil Geniuses, uh, Canadian coming from behind was the only one who possibly could have denied the disabled there from Mint, because it would have likely been covered for the rest of DZ if it had not been for Canadian from behind, a factor that DZ could not account for. Well played, good game sense there from Canadian, truly, to clutch that round and deny the disable. Mint was very close. He was about two seconds away from getting it. It's going to be a six pick off of the glass into a Ying exactly. here from Evil Geniuses, so they're not going to get stale as they go to attack the double bar. You know, I was honestly expecting that to be a complete waste of the smokes and a failed rush from Evil Geniuses, which was going to result in a dark zero round, to be honest with you guys. But uh, that is a really heartbreaking gas canister miss from Poach. Um, unfortunate is the word I would use to describe that situation on the Dark Zero side of things. They were so close to the recovery, but um, assumption that the gas canister was in a good position is what it, and ultimately did them in. So there was no other reaction to deny the rush in through that service entrance. All right, round number 11, and Attackers we're gonna need every single round, so Attackers that efficiency that we said from Evil Geniuses will at least fall by the wayside for this yeah. matchup in particular, and it will be our second match of the day that will go all the way to 12 rounds. I know that we have both commented on how much better the caliber of competition has been simply by adding these two extra rounds, and boy, has it ever. Every single one of these matches I'm expecting to go pretty far. I mean, we've got EXT versus Rise for the last one, Rogue versus SSG right after this. I mean, these are some close contests happening. Yeah. Great drone work here from Necrox to be able to spot the Valkyrie. And one thing that Dark Zero hasn't done so well in the past in Coastline, but have been better on their three, de three defenses, or through three defenses, as I once again struggle over my words. Thank you, that was a good recovery, I like to think. Is the ability to fight for trades. Well, it's not gonna be there this round at all. Stunningly absent from round number 11 as it's a double entry from Evil Geniuses to find Jarvis playing downstairs in Kitchen. And it's actually often Jarvis who's in positions where there's just nobody within a quarter mile to trade him off. Think about when he plays the ACOG upstairs inside of theater and now playing the Valkyrie down on that main floor. They'll find EG cracking this round open and giving themselves an early lead. We've been seeing this from both teams though, to be fair. Uh, whenever the early pick happens, almost, I mean, almost never is there a, a refrag for either or either side, when it's EG giving it away or when it's DZ giving it away. Necrox is going to lay in those candelas into Sandwich and the Sunrise Bar, and he now has full control over the B bomb site. And you're going to see right after him an attempted plant, but it's Mint to get the refrag, and a second for Mint. Excellent gunplay. And he's going to vault right into his enemy, EG cleaning up the rest of his team, and what a sweep there from Evil Geniuses. Dark Zero unable to really put up much of a fight apart from that double kill from Mint. A good swing back in favor of Evil Geniuses with them now on match point. That brief run that DZ seemed to have over for the time being. Keep in mind that right now Dark Zero in a very tight competition with Reciprocity for that second overall place. Reciprocity is actually leapfrogged over EG for the time being. Yep. Into sole ownership of first place. EG with a draw here, could possibly take it back. We'd have to see the round differential between these two teams, Yeah. but a win would obviously give it back to first. And once again, would create more space between Reciprocity and DZ, and would actually be Dark Zero's first loss. Evil Geniuses, Reciprocity, and Dark Zero, none of those three teams have lost, from my understanding. 
They have a win and draws across the board combined. Feel free to correct me on that. No, I think you're right. Defenders, protect your I'm pretty sure you're right. I think DZ has three wins and a draw. Yeah, three wins and a draw. Reciprocity has yeah. three wins and a draw. And Evil Geniuses has four wins. Um, on the note of the round differential, because you were touching on it, uh, Reciprocity had a draw, which means six rounds. So that's going to really hurt their differential. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, Evil Geniuses have not had a draw. But at the same time, if this is a draw, they will have, I believe, the same or very similar round differential. No, Reciprocity should have one up on the round differential front if this draws out. Because they have a 7-2, a 7-1, and a 7-3. EG have two 7-3s and a 7-2. No, and, and a 7-1. Well, whatever. Got it. So It'll be close. The point being made is that it's going to be very close between these two teams. Reciprocity, obviously, uh, and EG leaving rounds on the table in these two matchups, especially against one another. You want to be as efficient as possible, and efficiency will be the name of the game here, especially in this very final round. It's going to be another kitchen defense. It'll be the third time that we see Dark Zero go down to kitchen. They were successful the first time, which is what set the ball rolling on DZ's great start to the defense. But then, after that, they kind of fell off with their second return to the kitchen in the bars. This first floor not being very kind to Dark Zero so far. Good lineup being brought from EG. They're not going to be ring bringing as much disruption. There won't be any phone calls ringing. There won't be any candelas to deal with. As this looks like it's just going to simply be a disrupt and smoke plant from EG. Given that it's Kitchen, I would wager that we're probably going to see the push come in from delivery yet again, as that tends to happen. But I'd be too surprised if we see Bomb a lineup from EG. It tends to go over towards the bathroom side of things and keep somebody posted over at the kitchen window. EG is currently prioritizing that top floor control, and Dark Zero has put no emphasis on it at all. There's no one, as I can tell, as much as I can tell, actually roaming upstairs. Because there are no roamers upstairs, or at least not immediately upstairs, as we get to see finally Nyx is actually going to be on the top floor by luggage. That's going to allow for easy access on Evil Genius's side. And if they can use that top floor to their advantage, it could be a huge boon. But some very long angle play there from Nyx. And he's going to do quite a lot of damage to NVK. He will fall back as he's done his job of distracting the Ash. And that Crocs is going to miss some important shots there, just barely. And some more as Nyx does all of the damage for his team so far. A little on Necrox, a little on the NVK, but quite a lot overall. And that's going to put EG in, oh no, and plus that missing of the drone there from Geo is going to put EG in a really bad spot. Finally seeing the Mira getting played here from Dark Zero could actually work out great for them here. The perfect run for EG very much in jeopardy with 60 seconds left in this round. And low HP on at least two of their members in both Necrox and NVK. Geo trying to play this long angle as he's going for some punch holes in the wall. All things considered, Evil Genius is going to have to get some good picks here to make anything oh. happen. Canadian will get two in response to Nyx's one, though, and that's an excellent kill double for Canadian. And a third for Canadian as he opens up the floor. It's now just Hodden in a one versus three, and Young is going for the plant. Very easy here as Hotton just needs to walk on in. He'll catch one as Zen Poppy Geo tries to move out of the way, but the diffuser goes down and Young will be in a very good position, hugging the corner. Oh, but Hot and Cold will persevere. Canadian is from above. He's going to try to blow open a hole in the floor. Sledging away. There he goes. Exposed. He sees it. Canadian, get your kill. There you go. A 4K from the captain of the team. And this will be the first loss for Dark Zero in the First 5-0 that we have here for any team on the standings and a perfect run from EG. We'll continue onwards. Evil Genius is really having uh, the best season so far I've seen from them in a long time. And it's pretty dominant as well. Dark Zero is, I would say, one of their closest contenders in North America. And it went all the way, sure, 7-5, and that's the first time that uh, Evil Geniuses is going to get that close to a 